Uh, my name is Kathleen Hunt. I'm an assistant professor here at Mason. Um, and I am, I'm new here. I just started in uh, fall 2019. So I'm still um, developing my courses that I'll be teaching. Right now I'm teaching human anatomy and physiology one and two. I teach in the 124, 125 sequence. Um, and I hope to soon be adding classes, hopefully in endocrinology and maybe reproduction. Yeah, I have a joint position, which I'm really thrilled about, but is, it's quite unique. And it's, um, I think, relatively new for both institutions. So my position is, um, is I'm, a, I'm based at Mason in the biology department, but I have a strong affiliation with the Smithsonian, specifically the Smithsonian Mason School of Conservation, um, which is out of Front Royal, Virginia. And for any students who don't know about this, there's this wonderful facility that the Smithsonian has had for decades out in Front Royal, um, where they for quite a while have been doing uh, breeding of endangered species and um, research into wildlife biology and ecology and conservation. And Mason and the Smithsonian are now collaborating in having a joint educational program out there. Um, and Mason has built uh, this beautiful new dorm and a whole dining hall. and. Um, all these wonderful facilities so students can now go and do a whole semester long program there. Um, and so anyone who's interested in wildlife biology or ecology should, uh, should really consider it. It's amazing and you get to work with all these incredible Smithsonian biologists. So I um, eventually will be um, based, you know, be going back and forth between usually the SciTech campus in Manassas and the Front Royal area where um, the Smithsonian Mason School of Conservation is. Right now though, um, this semester I'm mostly working at, from home, um, <laughs> teaching a class that's theoretically on the SciTech campus, though of course the lectures are online right now. Now I teach a lot of human biology, but my own, uh, my own research is actually mostly wildlife biology. So I've been for um, a couple decades now doing um, wildlife research. In fact, for most of my career, I've been a full-time researcher um, focusing on wildlife biology, specifically um, how to get endangered species to reproduce. So that's obviously something that ties in really well with the Smithsonian's Endangered Species Breeding Program. In fact, um, I don't know if you know this, Dr. Grant, but um, my biology career began with an internship um, at that Smithsonian facility in Front Royal, Virginia, back in 1980-something, I forget the exact year, but um, that's actually what got me going on biology as a career and what made me think about um, becoming um, a specialist in endocrinology, which is what I really focus on. So, um, so now what I've been doing all along is studying hormones, uh, reproductive hormones and stress hormones. Uh, why isn't this animal breeding? Is it because it's too stressed? What's stressing it? That's typically the kind of questions I I asked, and it turns out all those questions apply to humans too. We have the same reproductive mm -hmm. hormones and the same stressed hormones, and we get stressed out exactly the same way. Um, so it ends up that the um, the wildlife research I'm doing is actually really applicable to humans. So I've ended up teaching both animal biology, wildlife biology, and also human biology because they're actually really similar. Um, so I go back and forth between those two areas. Yeah, I've always uh, been a traveler um, and my, um, my first research of my own that I did in my PhD um, took me to Alaska. So I was for many, many years going up to Alaska, northern Alaska, uh, every spring to study Arctic birds. Um, and then I started studying uh, Hawaii birds and um, birds at various national parks in the West. Um, and so I've been going to those sort of distant site spots of America for quite a while, but um, more recently I've been traveling a lot to South America as well. Um, I've been to Brazil many times and Peru and Argentina a little bit, and I have um, several really new, cool, fun projects that I, I think are going to be launching soon in Brazil on um, birds of Brazil, um, animals of the Brazilian Amazon, and also um, venomous snakes of Brazil. I have a project on southern right whales of Patagonia, another one on teddy lizards of um, northern Argentina, southern Brazil, and a brand new project in Kruger National Park in South Africa. So um, before the pandemic hit, I was buzzing around quite a lot to all these field sites. I have um, colleagues and, and various research teams that do field work um, really all over the world. Um, right now, I'm not doing any of that field work but hope to get back to that. And I hope to bring Mason students along, especially to Alaska and the Amazon. It's my secret. Oh, wow. yeah. This virtual background behind me, 
This is um, Tulik Lake Field Station in Northern Alaska where I did my PhD. So one of my, one of my secret plans is to take Mason students up to the Northern Alaskan tundra at this site um, called Tulik. Um, it would be um, late spring, early summer. So um, someday soon, I hope, maybe we can bring some students up there for a really cool field experience. It's a great place. It's fascinating and it's changing really fast right now, which is yeah. uh, a little alarming, but also uh, just very interesting. So um, it's a really interesting site. I think I'm one of the few faculty members who has an answer for this because I actually did leave science for a while. I, um, I had a job where I was doing too much lab work and not enough field work and not enough teaching. Um, burned out on the lab work and I ended up moving to Brazil and becoming a percussionist. I did that for three years um, and loved that, but I um, missed science and ended up coming back to science. So um, I think if I weren't doing science, I would be a very poor musician right now, and maybe a very poor um, science fiction writer also. Um, so I do both of those things, um, but I'm, I'm really glad now that I'm back in science and thrilled now to have a position where I can teach again. I realized one of the big missing pieces for me is that I had not been able to teach classes in the positions I had in the past, and now I can teach. So, um, that makes everything just immediately much more fun and interesting. I got a lot of pieces of advice. Um, students starting out, get your calendar organized, get enough sleep. This is really hard for undergraduates sometimes, but it, it really helps. Um, and by the way, I have a whole lecture I could give about how important sleep is for your health and your memory. Um, but I'll spare you all the details. Um, so those are just, you know, two practical things. For students midway along or, or a little further along, um, talk to your professors. We love to talk to students. That's why we mm -hmm. professors. We enjoy the chatting and we have um, things we'd love to help you out with or tell you about. So don't be shy. Um, just, you know, shoot us an email. We'll set up a day and time. Um, we can do it over Zoom these days and hopefully soon in person again as well. So talk to your professors, that's what we're here for. Uh, and then I'll actually add one other thing for students who are a little more advanced. Um, try to find a circle of friends who are not in science and who are doing something, maybe something artistic or something, some sport, um, something that's just totally different. Um, it'll just help crack you out of studying every now and then and, and remind you that there's other things in life. Um, I really recommend having a, a strong circle of friends, some of whom are doing different things than what you do. And I would recommend that to anybody in any field.